Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, calcium signaling. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, calcium calmodulin dependent kinase 2. Okay, so the calcium um, calmodulin dependent kinase 2. And this is a very important enzyme which responds calcium calmodulin dependent uh, it's a very important enzyme which responds to rises in uh, calcium in the cytoplasm. Okay, and it um, is a kinase enzyme, so it phosphorylates um, uh, protein targets, basically. Okay, and it's ubiquitously, um, uh, ubiquitously expressed, so it's in most cells of your body, and particularly, it's very highly expressed in the brain. So it's believed to potentially be very important in, um, in um, memory, potentially. Uh, it's got roles in spinogenesis and um, long-term potentiation and things like that. Okay, but in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to study uh, the structure of a single calcium calmodulin dependent kinase 2 enzyme. We're then going to see how it, uh, how it forms these uh, oligomers, um, where 12 of them get together and form this larger structure. We're going to see how it's activated by calcium calmodulin complexes, and we're going to see then uh, what its function is after that. Well, we're going to talk about autophosphorylation, and then we'll talk about its function. Okay, right, so let's begin. Uh, and firstly, just before we begin on the structure of a single calcium calmodulin dependent kinase 2 enzyme, uh, in, I just want to talk about a little abbreviation that people use. Because calcium calmodulin dependent kinase 2 is a mouthful, people often abbreviate this to CAM for calmodulin and then K, K for kinase. Two. So you will often hear people refer to this enzyme as CAM kinase 2. So CAM kinase 2. So people often don't, they don't often say CAM K2. Instead they say CAM kinase 2. So if you hear people refer to CAM kinase 2, that is the shorthand for calcium calmodulin independent kinase 2. Right. Okay, so the structure of this molecule, uh, well, of this enzyme then. So... It is a protein, firstly, and it has um, how many major domains? Four major domains that we need to distinguish. Now, one is the actual catalytic domain here, or the kinase domain. So this is the actual kinase. This is the enzyme which is actually going to add phosphate groups onto uh, proteins, basically. So here is the kinase of the uh, CAM kinase 2. Then, what you have is a linker from the kinase portion of this enzyme to um, a hub portion of the enzyme. So this portion down here is known as the hub. Uh, this portion here is known as the linker. And then off of the linker comes an important domain known as the regulatory domain. Okay, And this basically has a portion that sits in the active site of the kinase when it's inactive. So this is known as the regulatory domain, or it's also known as the pseudo-substrate. So this is the regulatory domain, or sometimes you will hear people refer to it as the pseudo-substrate. So slash pseudo-substrate. Okay, so it's called the pseudo-substrate because it's the portion that is sitting in the active site of the kinase portion of the enzyme and blocks, basically, the kinase portion of the enzyme actually being active. So, in order to activate this enzyme, what you have to do is alter the structure of the regulatory domain so that it can no longer sit in the active site of the kinase enzyme and block the kinase function. Okay, right, and indeed that's what calcium calmodulin uh, complexes are going to do. They're going to bind to the regulatory domain and uh, change its conformation so that it can no longer act as this pseudo-substrate sitting in the active site of the kinase portion of this CAM kinase 2 um, enzyme and blocking its function. Okay, so that's the structure of a single CAM kinase 2 um, enzyme. Now, you don't 
find CAM kinase 2 enzymes floating around in the cytoplasm as a single enzyme. You find them in big complexes. They get 11 more buddies and they form a complex of 12 of them. And now what I want to discuss is uh, the structure of this complex. So it's often known as the CAM kinase 2 oligomer. Oligo just means some, or many actually, I think it means many, and uh, so this just means a, a complex made up of many different uh, CAM kinase 2 enzymes. Okay, so basically this is what happens. All of the hub regions join together, well six of them join together, to form this bit here. Okay, right, so the hub regions join together and six of them join together to form this like wheel structure. But I've told you that these enzymes get together in complexes of 12. So what you have is two of these wheels stacked on top of each other, and that's how you get 12. So you've got two times six effectively. So um, here it comes down like that. And uh, then what you have is two of these wheels. So I'll draw a line across there to denote the fact that you've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six here of these hub regions all joined together and then you've got six below as well basically okay so every single one of these is one of these hub regions here so i will cover this in to try and make it a little clearer so this is a hub region here and what happens is you get 12 of these and they stick together in this great sort of uh, wheel well two wheels stacked on top of each other like structure and um Basically, what will happen is that this hub will have this linker region coming out here. And here is the um, actual kinase portion of the enzyme here. And of course, it's got its regulatory domain or pseudo substrate sticking in it like so. So that is how you make these uh, oligomers. And just to emphasize the point even more of the fact that there are these two wheels sitting on top of each other, this hub down here will again have a linker region going to a uh, kinase portion of the enzyme here. And again, uh, off the linker region will come a regulatory uh, domain or this pseudo-substrate domain like so. So uh, that just emphasizes this point that you've then got another hub down there, basically. Uh, a s another one. And Overall, if you counted the number up, you've got six in this first, this top wheel of six, and then you've got another wheel of six stacked below that, and that's overall how you get this complex of 12 of them, basically. Okay, now what we want to discuss is how it's actually activated, basically, by um, calcium calmodulin. So, uh, calcium calmodulin, then. So we'll have a little bit of a talk about calmodulin briefly. So calmodulin, we'll discuss it down the side here. Calmodulin. Calmodulin uh, basically is a protein which can bind calcium. It, in its um, unbound state, so in the state where it has no calcium bound, it has these two lobes like so. So this is the N lobe and this is the C lobe. And both of these lobes have calcium binding sites, and they have two calcium binding sites. So there are two calcium binding sites here, and two calcium binding sites here. And each of these calcium binding sites is what is known as an EF hand domain. And I'll just briefly go over what an EF hand domain is. So um, there are many different uh, domains in proteins uh, which can bind calcium. An EF hand domain is a form of uh, protein domain which is capable of binding calcium. And basically, it has a structure like this. If this line represents the polypeptide, i.e. the polymer of amino acids, then you have amino acid followed by an amino acid followed by an amino acid followed by an amino acid, etc., etc., etc. And they f the polypeptide overall curves around in this loop structure here. And this loop structure is the EF hand, basically. So this is an EF hand. And uh, the way in which it binds calcium is that most of the amino acids in this loop, uh, they will be acidic 
uh, amino acid residues, which means that their R group uh, will be an acidic group. So, for instance, aspartate, uh, glutamate, these are both amino acids which have um, acidic R groups. And now other names are aspartic acid and glutamic acid, so that gives it away. Um, and what that means is that they are capable of donating a proton, basically, and they like to donate a proton. Now, if the R group donates a proton away, well, proton has a positive charge. Uh, so, if you have an amino acid group which is neutral originally, and it donates a proton, a positive charge away, then that's going to mean that the what's left behind, the conjugate base of the acid, if you like, uh, is going to be negatively charged. So you're going to get a bunch of negatively charged residues all facing into this centre of the loop here. Now that is perfect for calcium ions to come along and bind in. So let's say this is a calcium ion here, because calcium is a divalent cation. It has double positive charge on it, basically. So it will be sort of interacting very favorably with the negative charges on the amino acids facing in, basically. And that's how um, calcium binds to EF hand domains. Now, EF hands rarely occur in singletons, basically. Instead, they often occur in dimers. So you'll have one EF hand like this. And then you have a little linker, and then you have another EF hand sitting right next to it, like that. So you have two EF hands, and this overall structure of two EF hands next to each other is known as an EF hand dimer, basically. Okay, so you often get these EF hand dimers occurring in proteins, and they will therefore have two calcium binding sites, because a calcium ion can bind here, and a calcium ion can bind here. And these EF hand dimers are what you have in the lobes of calmodulin. So you have one EF hand dimer in this lobe, one EF hand dimer in this lobe. And that's why you have these two calcium binding sites. Now, uh, when calmodulin has no calcium bound to it, it's known as um, apocalmodulin. So this is apocalmodulin here. Or some people will just denote that apocam, basically for short. So CAM is what's used for the shorthand of calmodulin. And you have C, capital, then A, lowercase, and then M, uppercase. So that's APOCAM. Okay, now, when calcium binds to these calcium binding sites of these EF hand dimers that are both in the um, uh, that are in both the N and the C lobe of calmodulin, what happens is that the structure of calmodulin changes, basically. And these both of these lobes sort of move further away from each other. And also, the linker between the N lobe and the C lobe changes from being this linear polypeptide to being an alpha helical structure. So I will show this down here. So here is the two lobes of calmodulin. And then you have this alpha helix linking the two, like so. Okay, right. So, um, when, then um, obviously it's in this state because calcium is bound to it. So I need to show the calcium being bound in these two binding sites on each um, of the lobes of calmodulin. So basically you need four calcium ions to bind to calmodulin in order to achieve this conformational change. And this new structure is then known as a calcium calmodulin complex. So this is a calcium calmodulin complex. Right. Okay. Now the calcium calmodulin complex is capable of binding to things and altering uh, their, com um, well, their conformation basically and altering their function in that way. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.